So anyway, it was Henry Kissinger, the most famous Secretary of State of the United States, who told me that the United States doesn't have a strategy in dealing with China. And of course, that's shown in many ways in the somewhat erratic actions taken by the United States against China. And I'll just give you one example. As you know, Donald Trump launched a trade war against China. Now, the goal of the trade war is to weaken the Chinese economy, right? And the question is, has it succeeded? And the answer is no. And I'll just give you one, one statistic, okay? In the year 2009, 12 years ago, the size of the retail goods market in China was 1.8 trillion US dollars. And in the US, the size of the retail goods market was $4 trillion. So US was more than double that of China in 2009. 10 years later, 2019, and 2019 is a very significant year because this is two years after Trump's trade war. So Trump had beaten up on China for two years, launched tariffs, launched sanctions, cut off Chinese companies, you know, prevented American investment in China. He, he, he hit China, he hit China, he hit China, he hit China. And then after 10 years, China's retail goods market went from $1.8 trillion to $6 trillion, three times the size in 10 years. And the United States only went up from $4 trillion to $5.5 trillion. So despite Trump's trade war, China's economy grew even stronger. So we showed you it has failed. Now, when a trade war has failed, what's the first thing you do? You stop it. But you notice that Joe Biden cannot stop the trade war against China, even though it is in America's interest to do this. And so this brings me to my third part about who will win this contest. And you notice that, you know, I've just come up with an article, uh, Mulya, uh, two days ago, in a magazine called The National Interest. Uh, I'll ask Carol to send it to you, Mulia. And uh, it's called, the article is called this, huh? Can America Lose to China? Now, it's published in a magazine called The National Interest. The National Interest is one of the most famous magazines in America. This is the magazine that uh, printed for Francis Fukuyama's famous essay, The End of History essay. So it's a very famous, and, 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 and the editor wrote to me and said, Kishore, can you please write this article? Because no American can ask the question, can America lose to China? Because from the American point of view, it's inconceivable. It cannot happen. It's impossible, right? And, and the reason why the Americans cannot conceive of the possibility of losing is because the Americans have won every contests uh, in the last 130 years. So Americans have got used to winning. They defeated Germ G G Germany in World War I. They defeated Japan and Germany in World War II. They saw off the Japanese economic challenge in the 1980s. The Soviet Union, they collapsed, right? So the United States is used to winning. So when it comes to China, they think, of course, we will win. And what reinforces this American conviction that they will win is the belief that this is a contest within a democracy in America and a communist party in China. And the Americans ideologically believe that freedom-loving democracies are always performed better than rigid communist party systems. And, and, because that, and that's also how the United States defeated the Soviet Union. The United States was a freedom-loving democracy Soviet Union was a communist party and United States defeated the Soviet Union. So they say, okay, we defeated the Soviet Union, we can defeat China also. And actually, I don't disagree with that premise. If indeed this is a contest between a, a democracy and a communist party system, then the democracy will win. But what I have done in my book and I think this is, this is in some ways the biggest contribution that my book makes to uh, Americans and Chinese 
is that I, I try to understand the Chinese, the, the how the uh, uh, American political system is actually functioning. And the American political system, which used to be a democracy, has become a plutocracy. What is a plutocracy? Very simple. Now, as you all know, a democracy is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. So a government of the 100%, for the 100%, by the 100%. That's democracy. That's how people vote in their governments. But America functionally has become a government of the 1%, by the 1%, for the 1%. 